personal notice. Danger is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Iron Cat, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, it's just by luck that last night I didn't kill myself. Yes, kill myself. Mr. Valentine, will you please, please stay in your office? I'm sure I can be there before six. I need your help desperately tonight. Tonight, now that my eyes are more open, I need you. I need someone to help keep me from killing other people. Oh, thank heaven you waited. Oh, yes, forgive my appearance. No, no, come on in, Mr. Ramsey. Here, take the bags for you. Uh, I was out all night last night. Hello, I'm Claire Brooks. How do you do? I walked and I haven't changed my clothes. Oh, certainly have interfered with your dinner hour, haven't I? Oh, we had sandwiches and coffee sent up. Do you want some? You look as though you could use something to eat, Mr. Ramsey. I don't know. I, I haven't. Uh, I'll, I'll put them right here. Uh, yeah. They're not suitcases. Tape machine. The other one's a speaker. Tape machine? Recorder. My own. My manufacturer. Ramsey Dill Company. I designed it. <laughs> but I neglected the weight. Like carrying two elephants. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's better. Here's a cup for you. Sure, if you want it. Oh, thank you. Oh, coffee. Beautiful. Well, I, I brought those up here for some reason or other. Show you something, I suppose. Oh, well, maybe this will wake me up. <laughs> you understand I'm mad, both of you. Crazy, wacky as a loon. I forget things. I shake when I shouldn't. Too touchy, you work too hard, too neurotic, too serious, too unpleasant. Oh, yeah, sugar. Uh, two lumps. All right. Uh, suppose you start at the beginning, Mr. Ramsey. The sad saga of me... Nothing very original. Work too hard. At least that's what people keep telling me. You run this Ramsey Dill company? With Edward Dill, my my best friend. Five years, and we're finally doing all right. Business, I mean. I expected to be around next week when we were to sign a million-dollar contract. Expected? Is there any connection between the past tense and you saying you wanted to kill yourself? Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's, uh, I'm over that now. That's something else now. Killing other people. Oh, I, I I am tired, Mr. Valentine, confused. It's my wife, Martha. My little melodrama of self-destruction last night was only because I couldn't stand the thought of losing her. What do you mean? One of those tapering off things, a whole year of less and less interest in each other. Of course, it's my fault. Well, that's what everyone says. I've always believed it. They've said it so much. But is it? I thought so. I've had to get this work done, the machine. My partner is a good salesman, good personality, but I'm the one who has the stand, the reputation. I'm the electrical engineer. Oh. I did break down and let Martha take me on a vacation two months ago, hoping I could mend things. <laughs> but it only made it worse. I got shot in the leg. What? You what? Mr. Valentine, I won't draw any conclusions for you. Until last night, I never drew any myself. Well, we were hunting. Accidents happen. Any number of people out looking for deer with guns. I never even bothered trying to find out who thought I wore horns. I, I was too upset. I couldn't. What do you mean, too upset? Martha talked of going away to visit her sister up north. She went out more and more frequently to her old office. She used to be a decorator. Here. Here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Huh? The, oh, uh... I see. There's a light plug. Oh. Here we are. Oh. It takes a second to warm up. You understand, I don't eavesdrop. The machine's on all the time at home, that's all. I've used it to check quality. Never even noticed the words people were saying. And 
Oh, here we are. Martha, what's the matter with that butler of yours? He looked at me cross-eyed when I came in. Robert's all right, Eddie. How much does he know? He's always admired Fred. He's all right. I've paid him extra. Don't worry. Drink your drink. Hey, what goes on? It's Edward Dill, my partner, my best friend, the man I turned to when I thought my wife might leave me. He know I'm here? I guess so. Hmm. I'll run up in a minute. Eddie, tell him he doesn't look well. He won't believe you. Sure, me. sure, I know. But won't he suspect? <gasps> oh, my... That awful machine of his isn't on, is it? I hate that thing. <laughs> Take it easy. That machine is going to make us a lot of money. The Ramsey Dill Company. That's us. Oh, don't. Don't talk about it. I can't. Besides it... You going fishing this weekend, Eddie? Yeah, I thought I would. I saw you buying tackle when I was down at the decorator's office today. Go down there quite a bit, don't you? Yes. I'm visiting my sisters, you know. Oh, uh, this weekend? Just for a few days. I won't stay, but Fred will be at Palm Springs with his doctor friend, so... Oh, here, another drink. I don't think I'll go back to work. I haven't really decided... Oh, Eddie, I'm so scared. Now, take it easy, Martha. If only it worked out right that time before on the hunting trip. I said take it easy. This is better anyway for the future. Well, well, look who's here. Hello, Fred. Mr. Valentine, this this is all mixed up. Until last night, I blamed myself for everything. Until you heard this tape. No, no, no. They, they were good friends. I knew that. Oh, even Robert's been acting so strangely. Dr. Baldwin was going to pick me up this afternoon for Palm Springs. But I phoned. I told him not to. Martha had already left the house for her sisters. I was alone with Robert. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is this doctor friend of yours? What? Of mine. Oh, no, no, no. I've only met him a few times. Of Dill's, an old friend of his, I found out. I thought the doctor was just interested in me. He kept telling me I needed a rest. Dr. Baldwin wouldn't be a psychiatrist by any chance. <laughs> what an appropriate question. I don't blame you. And he talked like one, but I found out he was just a general practitioner, a friend of Dill's. Listen, there's, there's just a bit here. I'll take care of everything, Mrs. Ramsey. Don't worry. Just the way you want it. Of course he needs a rest. It's the best thing for him, isn't it? I'm only doing what any old friend would do. I know this is all confused, but listen to me. At noon, I telephoned the decorator. And Martha's never been there. Never. Not in the past year. It's all a lie. And my friend, Edward Dill. Incidentally, was Edward Dill on that hunting trip with you and your wife? Of course he was. My best friend. And this weekend he's out fishing, but I phoned his lodge. No answer. Another lie. And so back to my wife. I called long distance to her sister. Was she there? She hadn't even written her for a month. Uh -huh. Now look. Here, look. This was on my wife's desk. What's that, a blotter? It's her writing. It's backwards. But I brought some of her own notes and things to prove it's the same handwriting. Uh -huh. The blotter she used to blot a check dated today. She must have written it this morning before she left the house. To Dr. G.F. Baldwin. Hey. Five thousand dollars. George. A personal friend of Dill's. A doctor who made only a few visits. I don't believe I ever would have returned from Palm Springs, wherever it was he was going to take me. Oh, it, 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 it sounds so, so crazy when you say it. I, oh, I'm such a fool. Supposing that doctor could manage to get you uh, put away, Mr. Ramsey. <laughs> I couldn't think Why? Why these people hate me? But I know now it isn't just that. I remember the big deal our company will make next week. I've served my usefulness. Oh, yes, yes. I, I'm sure I'd be quite easy to commit. And, and Mr. Valentine, I, I'm not proud of this. This afternoon I actually spied on Martha. She went to Edward Dill's apartment. That's where they are now, the two of them. Uh -huh. Let me ask you something. Is that servant of yours, Robert, still out at your house? Yes. Yes, Robert used to be a friend of mine. That's what I mean. And maybe they've paid him extra. If I twist his arm a little, he might change sides again and fill in the whole story. No, no, sit still, Mr. Ramsey. I'm going along. Get some rest there on the couch. Hey, Brooksy, feed him my sandwiches. I'm going out to feed this snide little plot right back down somebody's throat. <laughs> Robert. Robert! Uh, looks like I'm a little late. Somebody else has been doing the feeding. Nice, brutal going over. 
cracked over the side of the head. I guess you won't be telling any stories for a while, will you? Okay, I'll get you a doctor, friend, while we go at this in a different direction. Miss Beggs, the other nurse says you're Dr. Baldwin's assistant, that right? His bookkeeper, bottle washer, and hand holder for 30 years. And I'm busy now with the bills, thank well, you. Well, I'm busy myself, lady. I want to see the doctor. A guy got knocked on the head and the police are out looking at him now. Well, we've got plenty of business. Send him to the emergency office. Look, lady, look. I don't need the doctor for that. I need him for something else. Some fast questions. The doctor's out. O-U-T. Out. Oh, that's great. Now, who got knocked over the head? Somebody like you? Uh, guy out of the house I just came from. Uh, look, Miss Beggs, you keep the books, huh? Send out bills for Dr. Baldwin? Send out his laundry, too, when he forgets. See that he eats his lunch? Oh, sure, sure, sure. But there's a man named Ramsey who's been a patient of the doctor's. Check? Well, yes. Doctors called at their house a few times. Now, but, mister, I'm working late tonight, and if I'm... If you don't answer me, the police will ask it. Did you send a bill to Mrs. Martha Ramsey today? A note? Of course. Doctor was leaving town. He wanted some payment. Uh-huh. Five thousand dollars. Five what? Well, I I didn't know the amount they'd agreed on. Five thousand dollars for just a few visits. Lady, just tell me why he charged so much. But I... Why, he wouldn't. I don't know. It was just one of those mental cases. And the doctor was going to drive him up to a sanitarium this weekend. Maybe that's why... Sanitarium? Palm Springs? Well, near there. You see, this Mr. Ramsey should have been locked up long ago. That's what I'm told. Look, mister... That's where the doctor is now. Huh? Where? Out to pick up this man in his car. This Mr. Ramsey at their house. No, he's not. I just came from there. Well, maybe they've already left. Did you look around the side drive? Oh. Hey, skip it. Give me your phone. Hey, Valentine, we found this guy Robert you told us about and sent him to the hospital. Lieutenant Riley, that's not what Don't I asked. Don't interrupt me. Yes, we found a car belonging to a Dr. Baldwin out on the side drive. So we're 14 jumps ahead of you. We weren't blind like you, pal. We looked around, and guess what we found in the doorway of the study? The doctor himself. Only he's dead. That's right, Valentine. The doctor's dead. Struck over the head with a blunt instrument. For your information, the same one that hit Robert. And just to make it complete, guess what that instrument was? It was a cat. An iron cat. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. For your everyday driving on your vacation trip, nothing's more important to your safety than clear vision from the driver's seat. And a clouded, dirty windshield can be mighty annoying as well as a hazard. That's why you like the courteous, speedy windshield service everybody gets at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where you don't have to ask for it. Taking care of your windshield is as natural for men at these service stations as it is for you to say good morning to your neighbor. And they do the job in a jiffy because they have everything at hand within an arm's reach of your car. So for your driving safety and for your visual comfort, depend on the cheerful windshield service offered you at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. An iron cat. That was the instrument which struck down Dr. Baldwin. The doctor who, for $5,000, was apparently going to drive Mr. Ramsey off to a private sanitarium this weekend. And the iron cat was also the instrument which almost killed Robert, the Ramsey servant, who might have been on Mr. Ramsey's side. If your name is George Valentine, you know that this is one case where you'll have to work... What is this iron cat anyway, Riley? 
It's a doorstop. Used to be right here by the front door. Weighs eight or ten pounds. It's a nice weapon. Killer just grabbed it up and slugged both of them. The doctor and Robert. Uh huh. Where'd you find it? Oh, down that trail there through the woods, almost a mile. Killer left it that way and tossed this in the bushes, I guess. It's the path to the other road. Came on foot, huh? Car might have been seen by the main entrance. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Hey, hey, where are you going? To talk to the lady of the house, Mrs. Martha Ramsey. <laughs> Mrs. Ramsey, what kind of a railroading job were you planning on no. your husband anyway? To ferry no. him off to a sanitarium someplace? No, no, stop it, stop it. Oh, I love him, I love him, I love him. Well, Valentine, now look what you did. Quiet, will you, Riley? I'm just beginning to guess what I did. Hmm? Where's Dill? Didn't you bring Dill? I'm right here, Valentine. Will you lay off of Now, that? take it easy, you. But Martha thinks her husband killed the doctor, don't you understand? That he took the iron cat and slugged Robert and then killed the doctor. Eddie, please. To get away from them. Just more people that he couldn't trust. Like he wouldn't trust us, like he wouldn't trust anybody. What are you talking about? Come on, come on. Just who does she love? Her husband, of course. Oh, not me. I'm a friend, that's all. You were together in your apartment, weren't you? We've lied to him about everything for months. We've had to. Fred got worse and worse. That's why the doctor didn't want Martha around when he took him away. He was afraid there might be trouble, even though Fred signed his own papers. He signed what? Ramsey signed what? His own papers. He signed them right here. Oh, it's a, it's a thing you have to sign. You're, you're being locked up of your own free will and volition. Ramsey committed himself to the sanitarium? He did for observation. Baldwin was no expert, no uh, psychiatrist. They're up at the sanitarium. Oh, a couple of them have been here in the house, even though Ramsey didn't know who they were. We checked into Baldwin, Valentine. His reputation's solid. Of course, Martha came to my place this afternoon. At least I don't have a tape machine, and I do have a big shoulder to cry on. Oh, don't you understand? I like Fred just as much as she does, but... And with him can't... out of the way, you would have made a lot more money on this deal of your companies next week. What? Look, sure, sure, we kept it a secret. I mean, about Fred. We have to. People might think he couldn't be cured. The deal might not go through. And Martha had to pretend things about visiting her old office so she could see the doctor and see me for help. I'll, uh, I'll answer. Now, Till, listen to me. Yeah, that well, shooting I... accident two months ago when Ramsey oh, was yes, shot yes, yes. and Martha and you... Well, what about it? Mm-hmm. It was a deputy sheriff who shot him, you know. Is that so? What's that? Yes, a deputy sheriff on a hunting trip. Oh, I'm not kidding. It was an accident. Yeah. But poor Fred, he wouldn't even listen all to right, him. Sergeant. Thanks. It was Ramsey, all right. His fingerprints are on that iron cap. The butler, Robert, says it happened just as the doctor drove up. Ramsey got all excited when he saw the doctor's car and tried to run. Said he'd changed his mind about commitment. Robert tried to stop him, and Ramsey picked up the iron cap, and that's the last he remembers. Well, good enough. And he warned me himself. He said I laid myself wide open to being made a sucker. Hmm? He'll say anything when he's like that, Mr. Valentine. When he gets to feeling persecuted. Feeling nobody likes him. Why, if you so much as open your mouth when Valentine, he's like that... Valentine, wait a minute, where'd you go? Wait, what? what's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry I fell asleep, Miss Brooks. Mr. Valentine's not back. No, not yet. Oh. Here you like a magazine, Mr. Ramsey? I'm reading the craziest love story. Of... What's the matter? Nothing. Do you think I can trust Mr. Valentine, Miss Brooks? <laughs> well, of course. Don't be ridiculous. What? There, that's probably him. No, no, now. wait a minute. Don't, don't answer it yet. What? Well, he said he'd come back, didn't he? He didn't say he'd phone. Well, Yes, but maybe something happened. No, don't, but please, he... please don't. Mr. Ramsey. What could have happened that would make him phone? But instead... I can't just let it ring. Mr. Ramsey! Oh, oh. oh I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to kick the cord loose. You shouldn't have done that. Oh, I, well, I, I'm not awake yet. I was reaching to answer yes, it. Yes, of course. You believe me, don't you? No. But I don't think it's very important to you. Oh. Here, there's a little coffee left in a sandwich. I can warm it up on the oh, plate. Please, don't don't look at me that way. I am sorry. I think maybe we should skip it. Why don't you believe me? Why don't you? Why? Oh. Oh, forgive me. I, 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 I'm I, so tired. I, yes, of course you are. So much has happened, I, I can't even remember. A man is a peculiar thing. 
This office building is nice. I like it here at night. It's like a man. So many empty rooms, so many dark ones. Mr. Ramsey, I... I think I'd better call the night janitor downstairs. What? To tell him about the telephone for tomorrow, that's all. Well, you all. want to leave me, don't you? No, of course not. It'll just take a minute. Well, it's ten but... flights down. No, wait, please, don't, don't leave I'll me. just go buzz the elevator. Miss Brooks! <laughs> you, you don't understand. I'm afraid to be alone. Well, yes, I do. You came to us for help, Mr. Ramsey. That's what we want to do. Help you. Of course, I know what you're thinking. What you've thought all along, the way you listened to the story I told. Story? I did tell Mr. Valentine something, didn't I? So, don't you remember what you told us? You don't like me. You don't understand me. You and Mr. Valentine have never once really intended to... What's that? Siren. I, I don't know. Fire, maybe. Somebody speeding. Of course. I, I think I do understand you, Mr. Ramsey. And I'd like to talk to you. If you'd just sit down and... Robert we... didn't understand me. What? I told him I knew I needed help. I'd certainly go to the sanitarium later on. He refused to understand. Like all the others, my wife, Dill, everyone. And it wouldn't have happened if Robert hadn't tried to interfere. So much blood on that iron cat. Oh, no. Listen, that siren's coming here. No, it's not. It's just going by, going down the street... It's not coming here. I'm sure it's not. Look, now now there are men coming in the building. You and Mr. Valentine, you're interfering too, aren't you? No, no. No, we're not. (laughs) (laughs) There. If there aren't any lights, they won't know we're here. Mr. Ramsey, please listen to me. I wanted to be helped. To believe my wife loved me. Get away. Please get away. Listen. I'll tell them you're not here. I'll tell them that you... move. Closer and closer to me. Ah! Valentine, did you hear that? Brooksy. Brooksy! Brooksy! No lights. Oh, they're not here, but we just heard... Hey, what was that? I don't know, but come on, come on. Riley, wait! What? what? Could be any place. He's got her. One of the other officers, the fire escape, the storeroom. Now, you listen to me. What? Don't you understand? The closer we get, the more danger she's in. Go on, beat it. And make lots of noise. Oh, where is that blasted plug? All right, all right. Yeah, let's look someplace else, Valentine. Maybe she's downstairs. Let's take a look. Oh, here it is. Now, warm up, will you? Warm up and work fast. (laughs) Take it easy. That machine is going to make us a lot of money. The Ramsey Dill Company. Sure, Ramsey, you're sick. Don't talk about it. I can't. Besides, it's... Everybody will tell you that, that you're sick. Weekend, yeah, I... Well, Even I the doctor's trying to pick on you. He says it, too. Down at the decorator's office today. Go down there quite a bit, don't And you? listen to Dill. Yes, but I'm busy That guy's to trying to steal your wife. Oh, this weekend? And your That's precious great. machine. I won't stay, but... Hear that sucker? <laughs> that a boy come on closer. Go here. I'm come on, you sucker. We'll all I tell you off. Shut up. We're all trying to frame you. Shut up. Make a fool out of you. Stop it. Ramsey the sucker. Stop it. Kick them all in the teeth, Buster. Ah, where you get yours. Hey, Brooksy. Brooksy. Where are you, Brooksy? Oh, George. <laughs> his hand over my mouth. The closer you came, the more frightened he got and the more... I know, I know, Tom. I'll never forgive myself. Well, it's all over now. The boys took him away to the hospital. It wasn't your fault, George. Of course it wasn't. We can't be right all the time. Dangers are stock and trade. Well, we do lay ourselves wide open. You can't help it if a nut reads the wrong meaning into everything. His wife and partner's concern over him, their worry and whispering. Riley, I don't want you to get taken in for a sucker reader. Huh? No, I don't want you reading the wrong meaning into things. George. Things like, just because Ramsey socked Robert with that iron cat, he killed the doctor, too. What? Well, Robert himself said the doctor's car just drove what up. What about and... that $5,000 check? Well, it's deep, but they wanted to keep it quiet. You investigated and, uh... the doctor yourself. Solid reputation. Of course Martha Ramsey paid it because she was so upset, didn't question it. 
But go over and pick up those two things there, Riley. What are you talking about, Those two boxes over there, what's left of them. The tape machine and the speaker. See how heavy they are, how clumsy. Go ahead. Yeah, well... Sure, maybe they are, but... All right, then think back. Ramsey left the house carrying those, you know. Only he socked Robert right by the front door. Hey, wait a minute. Sure, sure. And the doctor's body was found in the house, too. But the weapon, the iron cap, was found nearly a mile from the house, where he supposedly discarded it or tried to hide it. Go on, pick up those boxes again. And now tell me how he'd carry the iron cat, too. Holy smoke. It can't be done. See what I mean? Now, suppose the murderer was there and saw what Ramsey did to Robert. Saw him drop the weapon right there by the door. And quick like decided to take advantage of the escaped madman. Killed the doctor when he went inside the house. Left on foot just like Ramsey had. And then threw the iron cat into the bushes to make it look worse for Ramsey. Sure, the final touch that backfired. But I don't understand who could have... Riley, who might very likely have driven up with the doctor... You know, it's always bothered me that he came all alone to take a man to a sanitarium. And who'd be most likely to help him? And who, after 30 years, might have plenty of motive to kill him? Particularly when you remember who it really was that banks for the doctor and admitted she herself sent that request for 5,000 bucks to Martha Ramsey. Miss Beggs, that old battle axe who kept the doctor's books. Be careful, Riley. She's probably pretty much of an iron cat herself. We did help Mr. Ramsey after all, George. Well, they caught Miss Banks, if that's what you mean. She admitted she'd been dipping into the doctor's funds, and he was finally catching on. That she tried to get 5,000 in a hurry so she could run away. Only then came along an even better opportunity. Mm -hmm, To kill the doctor and keep the 5,000, too. Sure, and Ramsey would have been blamed. You know, I don't think the poor man would have really killed me out there on the fire escape. You don't, huh? No. He's sick, isn't he? In a sanitarium, isn't he? Oh, but George, he can be cured. I'm sure he can. There's so many people around him who want him to get well. <laughs> okay, Angel, okay. In spite of what happened, you still say that. You know, sometimes I sort of like you. Well, like? George, that and the word trust. Well, the way he used them, I would just as soon not be reminded. Darling... You could fish around and find a nicer word, couldn't you? Whether you're driving in city traffic or out on the open highway, there's a lot of difference between driving a car that acts dopey and driving with Chevron Supreme gasoline, which gives you that new car feeling. That's because there's a lot of difference between ordinary gasoline and Chevron Supreme. You may not have known it, but most raw gasoline contains impurities that form gum. Gum that makes rings and pistons stick and cuts down a car's power. Chevron Supreme is the gasoline that's super refined to get rid of engine sticking gum. That's why you can depend on this premium quality gasoline for that new car feeling the year round. Try it in your car for new power, for full mileage in the kind of driving you do. Ask for super-refined Chevron Supreme at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Larry Dobkin was heard as Ramsey, Charlotte Lawrence as Martha, Bill Boucher as Dill, Frank Hale as Miss Beggs, and Victor Rodman as Baldwin. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.